Let me show you this quick and easy way of creating this Orton Glow effect in Photoshop. As always, you can follow along by downloading the RAW file from the link in the description. And now, let's begin. As always, I will be showing the whole editing process, so if you're just here for the Orton Glow effect, make sure to check the chapters of the video to quickly navigate to that point. First, however, let's do the RAW adjustments, and these can be done in Lightroom as well. So I'm going to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape to bring up the base saturation a little bit because I want this image to be vibrant. Then let's do some basic adjustments. First, let's expand the lights panel. Right away you can see the sky is kind of blown out and we really don't want to have this in our images. So I'm going to bring down the highlights and by doing so we're going to restore all the details we need from the sky. Next, we also need to work on the shadows because those are just a bit too dark. I'm going to bring up the shadows for that and that will already help quite a bit as you can see. I'm also going to bring up the blacks, which will also help for that purpose. And just like that, we have a better exposure. You can also see that on the histogram, it's well balanced with the lights and the shadows. Of course, we did lose a little bit of contrast, but don't worry about that. I'm going to fix that in a minute. First, I'm gonna work on the colors as well. Since I want this image to look like a nice warm sunset image, I'm going to bring up the white balance temperature to introduce more warmth. Of course, we don't want to overdo it, so be really, really careful. I'm always taking a closer look at the snow when adjusting the temperature. Right now, you can see we still have a little bit of bluish color left in the snow. So that I would say is a good point for a warmer white balance. Of course, I also want this image to be vibrant. So let's bring up the vibrance. Perfect. And now let's head into the effects tab. Here, I'm gonna make this image sharper by introducing some texture. Then to improve the contrast, I'm going to bring up the clarity just a little bit. And then to set up the base image for the glow effect later on, I'm going to use negative dehaze. This will already help a lot in introducing some kind of base autumn glow to the scene. And that's pretty much in the image after the basic adjustments. We can compare to before real quick. So we started with this raw file, no details in the shadows and the highlights. But thanks to some basic adjustments, we recovered that pretty nicely. Now let's do a little bit of masking. This shouldn't take too long. What I want to do first, I want to create a sky selection and I want to make the top part of the sky darker. So I'm going to subtract a linear gradient with which I'm going to remove the bottom part of the sky from the selection, just like this. And in here, what I'm going to do to make it darker is to bring down the exposure. I think we can further improve this effect by bringing up the contrast. And I'm also going to drop the blacks to make the sky even darker. Of course, I don't want to overdo this effect, but I think right around here, this is looking pretty good. We could also bring down the temperature to make the darkest parts of the sky just a little bit colder, giving it a more natural look this way. Then let me create another sky selection. This time I'm going to subtract a linear gradient coming down from the top. So I think something like this looks good. What I want to do in here is to make it warmer by simply raising the temperature, introducing more warm tones to the bright part of the sky like this. Okay, I do think I need to rotate it a bit and adjust the size of this linear gradient to make it look more natural and give it a softer edge. But this is looking pretty good. And let's also work on the foreground real quick. I'm using a radial gradient for that. I want to cover pretty much most of the foreground. Let's rotate this radial gradient. And what I don't like about the foreground is the low contrast. You can see it when I deactivate the overlay. It's kind of too bright. And so I'm going to fix that by simply pulling down the shadows, paying close attention to the histogram as I do this because I don't want to introduce any clipping in the darkest parts. And I'm also going to introduce some clarity, which makes the foreground just look better. Wonderful. Now, since we have introduced more warmth to the sky, we also need to introduce some more warmth to the reflection in the water. So let's do that using another radial gradient. And I'm just targeting the bright part of the reflection like this. And here, let's bring up the temperature. And this should be about it. Perfect. That's the image after the masking adjustments. Let's take a look at before compared to after. Much better contrast wise. Now let's do a bit of color grading before we start heading into Photoshop.
and I'm going to start in the color mixer with the hue because I'm not a fan of these yellow tones. I want to change that. So I'm going to bring down the yellow hue quite a bit, turning them more orange this way. And I'm also going to turn down the orange hue just a little bit to make all the orange color tones a little more intense. All right, then split toning. Here, what I want to do is to introduce more warmth using the highlights. So let's do this. I'm going to set up the hue first. I'm choosing a nice warm color tone that I like. Let's go with golden hour light somewhere right around here. And to make it visible, I'm going to bring up the saturation quite a bit. Like this, I would say. This is looking much, much better. So I want to keep some color contrast in this image. That means I'm going to use the midtones to introduce some subtle blue tones, set up the hue for the midtones, and then set up the saturation. I'm only using very tiny amounts because I really don't want to overdo it with the midtones. I just want to have a subtle hint of blues in the midtones. So that should be enough. And finally, let's head down into the calibration tab. Here, what I'm going to do is to bring down the blue primary hue. This is something I do for most of my images because I just like the effect it has on the colors. This is looking wonderful. We can boost the saturation some more to make the colors pop. Perfect. Now, the only thing left to do is the sharpening in the details panel. And as always, I'm going to start by bringing down the radius all the way. Then let's raise the details all the way up. I'm also going to add masking while holding down the Alt key so we can nicely target the important areas of the image like this. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. So that's the image after the raw adjustments. Again, let's take a look at before. This is what we started with. And we turned it into this shot with only a bunch of raw adjustments, which again can also be done in Lightroom. Now, let's introduce a heavier Orton Glow effect. Therefore, we need to open up this object in Photoshop. Okay, so how do we add this Orton Glow effect? The first step is to duplicate our base image. We can do that by hitting Ctrl J. Then the next step is to make the image blurry. Therefore, we're going to head into the filter menu, go to blur and choose Gaussian blur. You can play around with the radius, increasing it will make it more blurry and reducing it will reduce the blur effect on the image. So what I think is a good radius is around 50 pixels. So let's go with something like this. And then all we need to do is hit OK. Then right away, we need to use the fade command. We can do that by heading into the edit menu and click on Fade Gaussian Blur. What the Fade command will do is it will fade the latest adjustment we did to the image. So in this case, the Gaussian Blur effect. In the Fade window, we do have two vital options, the Opacity and the Blending mode. So if I bring down the Opacity, we will lessen the effect the Gaussian Blur will have on the image. As you can see, by using a different blending mode, we can change how the Gaussian Blur is overlaid on top of this layer. So for the Art and Glow effect, I suggest three blending modes. You could go with Overlay, which as you can see, will add a very contrasty Art and Glow effect. You could also go with Screen, which is a little more dreamy and a little bit brighter. But what I personally prefer is the Lighten Blending Mode. This is some kind of nice balance between bright and dark, and it also doesn't alter the contrast too much. So once you have chosen the Blending Mode, just play around with the opacity and set it up to what you think looks best. I want to kind of make it really strong for this image, so I'm going with something around 37. Usually I would go around 20%, but I think in this case it looks quite good. Good. Actually, let's turn it down just a little bit. OK. Then all we need to do is hit OK. And that's all we need to do to add this perfect Orton Glow effect. Of course, we can take it a step further. This Orton Glow effect looks great on the highlights, but it kind of makes the shadows look a little bit too flat by reducing the shadows contrast. But there's an easy way we can change that. Let's right click on the image, go into the blending options. And then we want to make use of blend if. All we need to do is hold down the Alt key, click on the right part of this arrow and drag it up. And as I drag it up, less of the shadows will be affected by this Orton Glow layer. So we can fine tune this glow effect, telling it which part of the tonal range it will target. 
So the further I bring it up, the less of the Orton Glow effect will become visible. This is way too much. I just want to exclude the darkest shadows of the image. So I'm going with something like this and we're done. Hit OK. And there we have the perfect Orton Glow effect. This is without the glow and that's the image with the glow applied. Much, much better. So that's it for the Orton Glow tutorial but I'm still not finished editing it because I want to introduce some more heavier sunset towers. I'm going to use an adjustment layer. Let's click in this menu down below and I'm going to use the photo filter, which you, as you can see, will make those warmer tones a little more intense. I think this looks great for this scene. And what I also want to do is to use the Nick Collection plugin to finish this image. Therefore, we need to first merge everything into a single layer we can do that by hitting Ctrl, Shift, Alt, E. And with this layer selected, I'm going to head into the filter menu, go to Nick Collection and choose Color Effects Pro 4. I just want to point out this is a paid plugin, but it's really worth it if you're into heavier editing like I am. I'm going to start with this brilliant warmth effect, which will further improve the warmth of these sunset tones. I might want to tone down the saturation, however. Maybe let's reduce the warmth as well. Okay, then let me add another filter. I'm going with the classical soft focus, which will further improve this autumn glow effect. I just want to make it a little stronger. I'm going to use a different method, however, to not make it too bright. I want to go with the third soft focus method. And I only want to target the sky with this one. So I'm going to click on add control point and I'm going to click right in here in the sky, which is the perfect spot for this glow effect. I can deactivate this filter for a moment so you can see the difference. It kind of makes the top of the trees a little softer. I think it looks great this way. We could add one more control point on the other side, just like this. Perfect. Then and let me add one more filter. I'm going to use the polarization effect, which I love using for landscapes like this. Let's bring up the strength, which will make the colors pop just a little more like this. Wonderful, that's it. So let's hit OK. All right, and there we have it. That's the finished image. I hope this little Photoshop tutorial was helpful and interesting. As always, if you have questions left, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.